the Speakeasy podcast, where we talk about the behind the scenes of becoming the successfully paid speaker and author. And I'm your host, Alex Avis Felder, the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, Amazon bestselling author, podcaster, yeah, 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 founder of the World Voice League, a virtual community of female speakers who are coming together to impact social change. And so, you know, let's talk about it. The doors, they have been a closing. When we look at the changes in social media, when we look at the companies and businesses that have been closing, the doors have been closing. But what does that mean for you? And for each of us, that may bring some tinge of fear because we kind of look for that security in that job. We look for that security in the way things always were or the way things used to be. And so when things come and kind of stir up the pot and shift things a little bit, what is it that you really do? So I'm super excited about our episode today because today we're going to be talking to Lorianne. Hey, Lorianne. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. And I'm super excited about today's episode because we, let's be honest, we have a plan in our head. And that plan in our head is amazing. <clears throat> it includes brownies and ice cream and <laughs> never gaining a pound. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I like that dream. <laughs> It includes these different things that we have because we have plans. We, uh, we plan things out. We may have our five-year plan, our 10-year plan. But what happens when that door just, oh, uh, not only does it shut, but it closes right in your face. So, Lorianne, tell them a little bit about you, and then we'll dive into today's topic. Okay. Well, for 15 years, I was supporting a very well-known thought leader who um, decided at 75 to sell her business, uh, which meant that I was no longer needed. And so I was 60 and out in Los Angeles, laid off without a job. So um, it became very clear within the first three months that corporate America didn't want a 60 year old woman. Um, silly on their part, let me just really, dig that in because we have so much knowledge and um, any 60 year old that you might want to hire is going to stay until they're 67 and can retire. So, you know, in this day and age, the young ones, they change every couple of years, period. So, um, but anyway, if I wanted to continue to work, I needed to start my own company. So I did. And within 15 months, I am now bringing in three times what I was making as an employee. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm sitting here like screaming. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> and so um we know that okay, this is the this is this is the honesty moment. The honesty moment is in that exact moment, what was the initial thought? In Holy the moment crap. when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was it's like, oh, crap, what am I going to do? So, uh, yeah, it was scary. I, I make no bones about that. Um, but I knew I had a, a set of skills that were really needed. So um, I specialize in speakers, authors, and podcasters in supporting them and growing their businesses. It's what I've done for the last 16, almost 17 years now. And that's so powerful. We always hear, you know, in that moment, we kind of clamor at just finding something. Yeah. And it's like, we're kind of, we're, we get, you know, we have this moment where the door just kind of closes and we look around and we see the only thing in front of us right now is the hamster wheel. So we stop trying to get out of the cage and we just accept the hamster wheel a lot of times. Yeah. So that'll be the people that you see who are in that moment. And now they're at Walmart. Yeah. In that yeah. moment, now they're at McDonald's. So was that ever a thought for you that, you know what, let me go to the hamster wheel because at least the hamster wheel is something as opposed to what I may have to encounter outside of the cage. 
Well, what I had done was I had enough um, with regards to savings and whatnot to make it through a year. And, you know, had this not worked out, yeah, I would have done whatever I needed to do and got a job wherever to make ends meet. But I did give myself a year because I knew that my skills were needed. Um, there are, do you know that there are now over 600,000 podcasts? <laughs> yes, the podcast industry has completely Boom. exploded. Exactly. So I knew that I had skills to support these people. It was just a matter of I needed to learn how to be seen and get noticed by these, the, my ideal client. And so I gave myself a year. But um, sure, I totally understand if you don't have a year's worth of savings. I mean, we talk about that and it's all well and good. I, I, for the first time after working for 43 years, actually got unemployment, which helped, you know, get through those first six months where I wasn't quite making all my, my, you know, I wasn't cracking the nut to, to make sure I was paying all my bills. So, um, but I've been very frugal. I was a single mom for 20 years. So <laughs> I have always learned to count on myself. So. Isn't it always interesting that the things that we go through and endure at, at that significant moment, it plays a huge role in us being able to not just survive, but thrive. Exactly. Exactly. You know, you have to go through those things to to get out through the other side and realize, wow, if I live through that, I can live through this other thing. This is just peanuts compared to some of the things I've done, you know, and had to live through. So, so um, I figured I had to have enough to make it through two years just in case I did have to go on social security. <laughs> but, um, you know, I knew I had that back, that that uh, backup plan. Uh, but yeah, I would have done whatever needed to be done to, to make sure that there's food on the table and the roof is paid for. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I get where everybody's coming from. You know, and that puts us in a, um, a place of, yeah, I am going to do whatever's necessary, which mm -hmm. is really interesting because when you have people, and I'll even just, we'll just talk about podcasting. When you have pot, people that come into podcasting, there are those that come in that are like, I'm going to make this work regardless. So if people don't show up, then I'm going to have the content to go forward anyway. If, or I'm going to have people on standby for me to go ahead and interview anyway, as opposed to the ones who get frustrated because when they don't know the behind the scenes, they can easily get frustrated and then they're here today and gone tomorrow. Right, right, right. That's why you need, you need to network. You need to learn from everyone and you can learn something from everyone. And I think that's a real important piece of information that, that young people need to realize they can learn something from we, you're not old, but I am, you know, it's like, Trust me, and I can learn so much from them. I mean, you know, I that old idea of an old dog can never learn new tricks. Uh, okay, I'll make this family friendly. Baloney. <laughs> I'll make it family friendly. Baloney. I, I actually created my own web page. I created my own graphics for my, um, what I call, you know, my lead magnet is what they call it. Um, but it's like, so I found in this last year, just how much I still could learn and actually am now having way more fun because of the fact I'm, I'm getting better, you know, and, and I hit 61 in a, in a couple months. So, you know, <laughs> so it's like, nah, don't tell me old dogs can't learn new tricks because we can which is powerful because yeah. guess what? Coming into the industry, um, I sat next to, you know, I went to podcasting conferences like New Media Summit and um, uh -huh. went and listened to, you know, podcast movement and uh, 
you know, talk to, I had the opportunity to talk to Sean Douglas and all of these different people. Why? Because I was somebody who was always looking to gather information. I wanted to know what, you know, the people who had been in the industry for some time had been doing and what that looked like. Because again, if I could learn something, then I'm going to go all in and learn whatever I need in order to make this a success. Exactly. But what would you say to the ones that that's not really their mindset. And it can be a generational thing. It can be, uh, I'm going to do this my own way, Tyler, two-year-old mentality. But you have some that come into the industry and they don't think they need to learn anything from anybody. Uh, well, you know, um, yeah, they'll burn out really fast. They will burn out. I, I didn't know that you had gone to New Media Summit. So did I. I went to the one um, back in February. So, um, yeah, I think you can learn something from every webinar you listen to, from every conference that you go to. Now, I didn't, I actually went, I hear I'm fessing up people. I went not to get onto podcasts, but because I knew that room was going to be filled with 150 to 200 people that were my ideal client. I went for networking. And I think you guys need to look at that too. Go to the places where even if you don't think you need to learn anything, you're going to network with people you need to know. And, um, you know, and it just blew my business up by going there. And shocker, I had like 18 people you know, podcasters say, we want you on our show. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm, I'm the behind the scenes person. Nobody wants to hear me talk. And I am enjoying the podcasting world. And there's, you guys are such an amazing community of people. And that's the, another thing that, that I think speakers and authors that are just getting started need to understand. We're such a giving community. We're here to help you you know, it's not all about what you can do for me. I'm enjoying being mom <laughs> and helping all the young people get to the next level, whether they can afford me or not, you know? So, so it's, um, you can always learn. You can always learn something. Now you, you brought up a great, like one of my, I, I almost felt like we were on, uh, a kid show because I was like oh the favorite word the favorite word um you said networking which is oh, yeah. huge for me because um one of the reasons I was able to get into podcasting is because as an introvert this is everything I could be in front of 500 people because we're live or 5,000 people may listen to the episode but it's just me and you <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Though I had to put on makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, but I learned along the way that even though this is, this is my comfort zone and it, I can do so much with it, I still had to learn how to network. Mm -hmm. And so I had to literally create ways that I could network as an introvert because I'm not always the loudest one in the room. I'm not always the one that shines bright. So when you talked about the podcasters going out and connecting and networking, yeah. what would you say would be the top three ways that they can network with other podcasters or potential guests? Oh, there's, there's a lot of podcasting conferences now, a lot of them. Um, and really all you have to do is Google podcast conference and they will pop up. Um, but honestly, uh, these kind of things like New Media Summit are are so extremely helpful to, you know, get you started. And whether you want your own podcast or you just want to be on podcasts or, you know, you want to support them like I do, um, it's, it's just really, really, really important to network. And I do better one-on-one. -on -one. So I love the podcasting, especially the ones where, you know, you turn off the video. <laughs> you all, you all, I don't have to look at myself. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, it's because I'm, I, I love to have a conversation with someone 
and either help them in some way or learn from them. And if that's the way you look at networking, you'll go far. It's not all about going, hi, my name's Lori Ann. I do this and here's my card. Boom. No, 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 no. How can I help you? Exactly. How can I help you? Exactly. I tell people all the time, business cards make me itch. That whole 500 card business model completely is, it's ancient. <laughs> There's some people that still, and I, and you know, no tea, no shade. I, if that's what you do, if you still love business cards and you have it all done up all pretty and everything, then that's what works for you. Okay. And I'm old. I do have the business cards, but I don't give them out like as, you know, in a networking situation, unless someone specifically asked me, do you have a card so that they can write a note on the back or something along that line? And that, that's kind of how I use them. Um, and I, and I branded it with, you know, my graphics and whatnot. So that way it, within LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and my website, all the graphics, um, align. Right. So that, and that makes more sense. Yeah. But I remember going to networking events and I literally would cringe and just sit in the corner because people would just be <laughs> well, heading out. It's like, here, take my card. Here, take my card. And I'm like, no, I don't want your card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of the old school people are just like, hi, I'm Joe, the car salesman. Here's my card. Come see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like cringing in it's a, a corner. It's a different animal now. It's it, different. it definitely is. Now, I always ask this question of anyone who comes onto the platform. I say, you know, in this journey, there are blunders. Let's just be real. Mm -hmm. Not everything goes according to plan. Things happen. Um, so in this journey from having that transition happen, have you seen anything that you look back now and you're like, mm that wasn't the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have been very lucky. Um, I think that we all make mistakes. And technology has been like my biggest struggle because I've never considered myself a technical person. I'm a great end user, but someone needs to actually go, okay, Lorianne, here are the steps because I'm never, I will tell you, I am never going to read a manual in my life. It hasn't happened yet. And I can pretty well say it is not going to happen ever. So, so that for me is, is where my learning curve took, took some time. Um, and for a while, and I actually have now other women supporting me in my business and my clients. So I have people that I've brought on board that specialize in graphics, that specialize in the technology aspects that yes, I can do it, but it would take me two hours. It'd take them a half an hour. Do you see? And it, so just as I tell my clients, no, you need to be doing what is your high dollar priority and what you're good at and hire others to take that minutia and the administrative stuff, or whether it's the graphics or the technology, take it off your plate. Because wouldn't you rather spend those two hours bringing in another client than doing that work? So, you know, I, I actually follow my own advice and I have hired people <laughs> to do the things that I don't want to do. That's such a powerful statement. And I think that's, that's one of those generational things that has shifted a whole lot because coming in uh, for my generation, it was, well, you, you try to do as much as you can. You know, I, you, you, you bootstrap everything, you yeah. do everything on a shoestring budget. And there's a shift that has to happen when you go from, I'm the one man show. I'm the solopreneur to no, I'm an entrepreneur. Right. And that means that I actually have people underneath me. I have a business and I have people that I have to delegate to. And that, it's scary. It's super scary. It, it, it can be. It can be. I always say that I have people beside me, not under me, because they are my peers and people that I count on tremendously 
to make sure that my clients are happy. Now, um, and I consider them our clients. You talk about being scary. Yeah, it can be very scary, but in this gig economy, it doesn't really have to be. If you are a solopreneur, and we all start out as solopreneurs, we all do. But if you are, you know, really strapped budget wise, there are a number of sites out there that you can even get, you know, um, a, a VA to do something that's not even from America nowadays. Now, I'm, I, I'm a real true believer of you get what you pay for at times. <laughs> so you do need to be careful. Thankfully, you don't pay them until the job is done. So, I mean, so there are, there are ways to do this without having to hire a full-time employee and deal with benefits and vacation packages and all this other kind of stuff. The, the VA world is out there to support you. And depending on your need, there are VAs out there anywhere from $10 to $20 an hour. However, you also, like I say, get what you pay for. When I come on board, I look at things as we are partners and I'm helping you grow your business. So if you say, hey, Lorianne, I really need you to do A, B, C, and D. And I'm, I'm a mouthy broad. So I would say, Altavis, have you thought about this? Because I really think that this is actually a better way to do it. Now, if you say, no, I want to go with what I told you first, fine. You're the client. That's fine. But I'm going to always give you my opinion on other things that you can do that would really help your business as opposed to a VA who just takes the job and gets it done. When you do have a VA though, you need to be very clear in your communication as to what you need, when you need it, and how you want it to look so that you're not setting them up to fail either. And I've heard the horror stories. I totally have heard the horror stories. And I have had in my 15 months, one, one, I had one client that wasn't happy. And, you know, and so I actually gave her back her money because I value my reputation more than, you know, making a dollar. So you're muted, Deltavis. I know, and I'm sitting here like <laughs> smiling because I'm like cheering you on. I love it. It's. I was talking to my my team, and I said, you know, one of the things that I've done is I've moved away from this coaching model of everything is about the dollar. Everything is about the dollar, the dollar, the dollar. And I moved away from that back to it being about the service and the impact. And there's been a huge shift in my business because of it. And so the connections have been amazing. The opportunities have been opening up. Uh, but it was me making that shift that also brought me back to, okay, when you price things, why are you really pricing it at that amount? Is it that you're pricing it because that's what somebody told you would be a good price mm -hmm. yeah. or you saw that somebody else was able to sell it at that price and they made a good amount? Or are you really looking at this as this is the service that I want to offer. I can offer it for this amount and I know that it will be exactly what people need let me go ahead and go with this amount. And we really struggled um, maybe in the last three months back and forth if we were going to lower our membership. So I said, okay, well, you know, why did I originally make the membership that amount? And we went through that process. We talked to the members and saw what value they were getting. But one of the things that I did was I connected with the people who I knew needed that, what was in the membership, right. they weren't there. Right. And I said, well, why aren't they in the membership? You know, if we have what it is that they need. And sometimes it's that price. And it's because, you know, let's be honest. We think, oh, you know, I'm worth it. And I am. 
And we are. And I think they need to understand that they are worth investing in themselves. Yes. Indeed. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go buy some $25,000 yearly, you know, membership. No, I'm not because I value what I already know. (laughs) And my goal is not to be a millionaire. I'm like I say, I'm turning 61. I just, I love doing what I'm doing. And my goal this year, and here's a little, you know, little piece of information. I do set goals. And I have plans, but I only, at my age, I only do them a year in advance. So (laughs) I don't have a five-year plan. Who knows? (laughs) So my plan for 2019 was to triple my employee salary so that I was making that. And to bring in my daughter, who is brilliant, also, you know one that totally gets and is not in the least bit worried about technology and to bring her in full time because she was working nights. And, you know, it made for, it was the only way that they could bring in the money and not spend all of it on childcare. Right. So she worked nights, her husband worked days. So my goal by December was to bring her on board. I did it this month. So to me, okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to be bringing in three times my salary at the moment because I need to bring her in. And it's much more important to me that she now gets to be a normal mom. She and her daughter are counting the days because she had to give uh, notice at her work. And because she's very, um, you know, she's also like me and we value our, our, our respect and our reputation. She gave them a whole month of notice which, you know, it's like, you rock, kid. You know, so, and she's not even a kid. She's a mom, you know. (laughs) She's almost 30 years old and has a kid of her own. But this was a huge goal for me. And I thought maybe by December I'd get there. And I got there and I offered it to her in April. She's actually working for me now and will go full-time when she can leave her other job. So, I mean, those are goals that mean something to me, you know? That so, is epic. So, yeah. So, it's all, about, it's all about realizing what's important to you and make your goals based on that. It doesn't necessarily be, have to be, I want to be a seven-figure, you know, company. I don't really, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. But but I still want to have work-life balance. I want to go travel. As a matter of fact, I've got like three or four different trips. You know, I will bring my computer. I will do my work, but I'll be doing it at the pool, sipping up, you know, a margarita. So there you go. So, uh, you know, towards the end of the day, the, the uh, document might look a little weird after a few margaritas, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> I can believe it. <laughs> but it's interesting because that was that was my whole mindset shift. I, I originally wanted to be an entrepreneur because I wanted to be back home with my children. Right. And being a single mom of four teenagers, these years, it's after this, it's college and beyond. And we never know what beyond is going to be. But I said that, you know, a key element for me was I wanted to change their perception of life. I wanted to change their view. And so I had my youngest daughter a couple weeks ago went to Greece. And I sent my kid there too. I kept going, wait a minute, when do I get to go? (laughs) Right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to go. One Alphys, this, you and I are going. We're leaving. No, we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to leave the kids home and just go. <laughs> I love it. And then next year, I have two that are going to be going to Japan. Oh, and wow. so I'm like, to think that here it is three years ago, I was homeless. Three years ago, I didn't know what I was going to do. Wow. Three years ago, I was struggling to publish just the first book. And here we are now. Isn't it cool? That's amazing. Yeah. 
That's amazing. That, that speaks more volumes to me than me being able to say I'm a seven figure owner. Yep. It does. Yep. And that's the way you should build your goals because everybody's goals are different. If your goals are to travel, you know, and still have a, a, a position or a, a business that can survive while you go away for a week or two or three or four, you know, <laughs> great. <laughs> and if you've learned how to do that, um, give me a call. So, <laughs> So, right, you know, give up the details. Yeah, give us the details. <laughs> I want to know how I can go for away for a month. So, um, you know, so just but base base your 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 company and it's now can be your goals and your mission and your instead of having to follow someone else's rules and regulations. You know, you want to do it in um, an honest and upworthy um, and authentic way. But it's now your decision on what you do. Um, I actually am now, the new goal is to move strictly into business development. And I'm looking at creating a um, certification process for those AAs out there who want to be VAs in our environment. Like I said, there are 600,000 podcasters. Well, our podcasts, I should say, because many have, many podcasters have many podcasts. So, but there are 600,000. And if you're an AA, that's kind of sick and tired of, you know, your, your, your executive who's driving you crazy, mm -hmm. here's an awesome way to build up to that point. You know, because you can do VA on the side until you've, grown it to a point where you can go bye bye boss exactly. I'm not my own boss and that's what I'm really enjoying now is I get to plan my day I get to do what I want to do and of course there is client work that needs to be done and I do that but I enjoy it exactly. because I'm making that decision to do it that's if I it. decide I'm, I'm too busy I can't take on a new client right now I don't but um, I want because my end, back end purchase, just as you said, as a single mom, we struggle. And so my back end purpose is to be hiring those single moms, either whether they're young, but have a skill, or those of us who have hit 60 and got laid off. And we still have so many skills to offer that um, those marginalized women are the women that I want to hire and train and make sure that they can then make a good income out there. Man, it's amazing. It's This journey has been phenomenal. And I think one of the biggest things that I'm often telling people is pay close attention to the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Pay close attention to the journey because you get to meet so many different people. That's one of the reasons that I also love podcasting is I get to hear so many different stories and Listen to, I mean, I've heard messages and stories of people getting up and moving to Jerusalem. And I mean, I've had Academy Award winners on. And I'm just like, I get to partake in all of these different experiences and understand that what, you know, just a few years ago was kind of like pie in the sky dreams. Oh, only certain people get to live that type of life. Yeah. Here it is. I get to live the life that I want to live. But not only that, I get to look at, you know, all these other different women and men who are living amazing lives. And it, it may not have always felt like it was going to be that amazing life. But man, when you get to wake up and do something that you love. It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> so this has been an absolutely amazing interview. I could sit here and talk to you all day <laughs> and then we would have to like chop up the episode uh but i want you to let everybody know where they can connect with you online um as well as you know what services you have out there because i know I, I have quite a few podcasters that listen in on my show yeah well my website is www.lvsconsultingservices Dot com. So it's my initials, Lori Ann Vaughn Speaks. Um, 
And actually on my, okay, don't roll your eyes at me. All right. On my homepage is a document called how the top 10 ways to create massive growth in your speaking business. Totally free. And get this people don't, don't, don't faint. You do not have to put your email in to get it. It is totally there for you to pull because I don't need a list. I'm not selling, you know, some thousand dollar, you know, um, training or anything like that. I want you to go to the site, take a look around. If you need my services, great. If not, this will help you. It's just kind of my way to help those new speakers do the things they need to do. If they need help, <laughs> call me. But, <laughs> but it's totally free. You don't even have to put your email in. That goes right back to just being about service, guys, and being about making that impact. Guys, you know, I love being able to bring you these episodes. Let us know how this particular one resonated with you simply because guess what? We are on a path and a journey, guys, to being a successfully paid speaker or author. And the reality is, is that when you learn about everybody else's journey, then you start to look at yours and say, okay, well, mine may not be that bad. <laughs> exactly. And in this gig economy, it's never too late. You know, I mean, I, I have this terrible commute up four stairs to my office and um, you know what, in Los Angeles, um, there's probably about 10 million people that would love to have my job. So embrace whatever it is that you've been given and create your what and your why for yourself. I love it. If you just go mic drop and end it right there, right? Uh, just, just honest. Just honest. So. Oh my goodness. Guys, make sure you let us know again how this resonated with you. Go ahead. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick red. No, follow us. <laughs> make sure that you're getting the notifications. Uh and Listen, leave us a review over on iTunes, bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast show. We would love to let other people know just how awesome and amazing this particular show is. Guys, you know why? Because without you, there would be no us. We love the Speakeasy podcast studio audience. You guys are super amazing. And thank you so much for sharing it out. Until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya.